Whew. Before the man was even in the ground. This weirdo went on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to deliver the most nastiest, vile, venom-filled message about a dead brother I've ever heard somebody say. And I've heard people say worse. But she got she took the cake this time. I mean, Candace Owens can go low, you know, but she literally went out the basement to the street in the sewer and went ninja turtle deep on this one. First off, she went and said that the black community is crooked and we're lost and we're stupid and fractured because once again, we've taken a drug addict with a vicious background and turned him into a martyr. And we see him as the boy. Well, she said, I don't want to fall into the popular opinion that he was the next Malcolm X and the next Martin Luther King. Nobody said that. I don't know what Twilight Zone she come from, what planet, but she literally bought her extraterrestrial looking ass on the Internet and made this whole thing up in her head and just came out saying that we made this man out to be the next martyr. That's not what took place. This man was literally subdued on the ground begging for his life and was snuffed out that's what we're responding to number two she went and went on the dark web supposedly and looked for video footage that showed a bag of dope i've no i've never seen that that video yet i went, went on duck duck go i couldn't find it number three she said he had a, a hardcore criminal record, which I think he did. I'm, uh, from what I understand, he had a bag of drugs, did some time for it, had another bag of drugs, and broke into a house and robbed a pregnant woman. Now, before the comment section, I know y'all forming at the mouth to say, you know, you justifying, you know, by saying his record didn't matter, which it really didn't. His record had nothing to do. When they killed that man, they didn't know his police record. Number two, or rather, you can always lie on a 911 phone call. There's several instances where folks have lied on black people and got them killed because of the 911 phone call. Okay? The owner of the store even came out and said, I regret making the phone call now that I know what kind of person this dude was. Okay? He said, I'll never call the police again. Also, it was never even confirmed if the man was spinning a fake $20 bill. Okay? He didn't kill that woman. The woman that he robbed, from what I'm gathering, and I'm somebody who done did time. I got a criminal record, and I'm a conservative, so I can speak from experience. I think he was, just, he was just a dude with a drug habit, fighting to get his life straight, looking for dope, and I don't know what he was looking for drugs for in that pregnant lady house, but he just let her go and peeled off. It seemed that this dude was somebody who left where he came from, went to Minnesota, met a white girl, became a bodyguard or some kind of bouncer, started um, mentoring a salsa team. <laughs> I mean, this is just, you know, what the witnesses are saying. All of his friends came to the, you know, who was interviewed, said this was an amazing guy. He was super funny. They never said, oh, by the way, he always smelled like weed. He's, he acted like he was on crystal meth. It, nobody ever said that. The owner of the cantina. Said he was a great guy. Okay. I went looking for all the videos of, of somebody who said the dude seemed to be out of control. Other than the alt the alt-right or the right wing commentators, I can't find anybody who ever interviewed somebody who knew this man who said he was a horrible person. And moreover, he was so loved and so well liked, he actually broke the GoFundMe record. For donations to like what they they're like what sixteen or thirteen million dollars something like that, he broke a record. So the narrative that that they're trying to spin that this man was some kind of super Negro beast who was hooked who was hyperactive or, or hooked up on drugs at the time he got arrested if he was on some kind of crystal meth and fentanyl whatever he they found in his, his system it didn't turn into some kind of super Negro because he was on the ground crying for his mama. Begging for his life for nine minutes straight. So what does this dude record have to do with anything? That he deserved to die? Or that now that he is dead, it ain't so bad? There's a reason people like Candace Owens 
keep bringing up this dude background, okay? Because the way he died, no matter who he was five years ago, because his last conviction was in 2014, I know several guys who are out of, you know, the, the Bridge House and all these other organizations who kind of dabble in and out, you know, with rec recreational drug use because they're still fighting them demons. Being on the street, on drugs, that's madness. My daddy died of that. Just know that. I can speak from experience. My daddy went through hell fighting his drug abuse. All right? Then she got the nerve to say that we, we as black people are holding up all our scummiest and, and slimiest and we always downgrade our best and brightest. And that's a damn lie. I can't begin to tell you how many times we've celebrated all the beautiful black women that just won our Oscar Awards. Okay? We have the BET Awards, NAACP Image Awards, the Essence Festival. I live down here in New Orleans. Essence Festival is packed to capacity sometimes. 90% occupancy in all the hotels. They even shot a movie about that. We celebrate Ben Carson. So I don't know what you're talking about. My wife said she had to watch his movie, um, Gifted Hands, in her nursing class. So you got to watch out for them weirdos like that. But that girl is dangerous and the only people that really support Candace Owens are all the other self-hating blacks and mainly guys that want to sleep with her because she don't really mind, you know, spitting that venom. Now, let's get on to the facts of all of these different, um, these crime statistics. 29% of violent crime, according to the F 2018 FBI statistics, 95% of violent crimes go unsolved, Okay. Now, is it true that black people commit 38% of murder offenses? I'm saying murder. Murder offenses, yes. Also, being arrested and convicted are two totally different things, whether you know it or not. I mean, I'm super good at words. Being arrested for violent offenses and committing them are two totally different stories. White people also commit 31% of murder offenses. Okay, so there are several studies out there they point out that the reduction in poverty lead to a reduction in crime. So what she's basically trying not to say is that it's poor people committing a lot of violent offenses. Because people like her and myself and all the other well-to-do black people, folks who actually own property um, and at a certain age. We, I'm, you know, obviously I'm in my 40s, I'm way over 25. It's the under 25-year-olds that's committing all this crime because they ain't got nothing to lose. So it's not a matter of black people committing all this crime because we're inherently evil and prone to violence. It's all socioeconomical. All right. I'm super good at this. All right. And as far as, you know, everybody quoting all these these facts and, and you know, and data, data and facts are not the same thing because data is always changing, just like medicine. OK, all it'll do, it, it'll give you, it'll, it'll gauge you up or down. But a fact Water is wet. That's a fact. Nobody is immortal. That's a fact. I'm going to die. You're going to die. That's a fact. The sun goes up, the sun goes down. That's a fact. All right. And she keeps she was making this kind of this, this statement where she was like, well, yeah, man, I'm so sick and tired of reading all these these message boards where they're calling us monkeys and, you know, that, that we uh that we don't have any information. All we do is react on emotion. But how do you expect your base? So that's all you're reading. You're reading your own base. Your base are the people that you see on all these far right Reddit um, threads and, and all these message boards saying that black people are stupid. Because all you, Jesse Lee Peterson, Brandon Tatum, and all them other self hating blacks, all they do is regurgitate the same talking points from Steven Crowder and Ben Shapiro. And you right along with it, beating the drum and dancing to that same beat. So I don't feel sorry for you for reading. Comments and you don't, and you sitting next to you know, in a house with the same clothes on every day, looking like you ain't eating a week. Talking about black people are trained to respond and react like trained chimpanzees. Then she went on to say that well, the, the key to solving all this you know black on black crime is is for, um black people is um kind of like 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 tune that tone down our interaction. Or rather, to cut down on our interaction with the police, as if black people actually have a choice in that. Do you realize the most traumatic experience for a black dude with a degree is to be sitting down 
driving at a red light and have the cops pull up next to you. Excuse me, y'all. And have the cops pull up right next to you. Or actually pull up right behind you. So I don't know what she's talking about. Stop and frisk was real. Just as recently, you had um, a bunch of people who got cited for not wearing a mask. They got uh, ticketed for social distancing. 81% of them were, 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 were black. So you see what I'm saying? You can sit there and say that black people are making it you know, hard on themselves by having all these crazy incidents with police. But there's several video cell phone you know, exchanges of black dudes is being stopped for eating lunch in a parking lot. And the cops were, hey, man, I just... I saw you eating. You look strange. Well, I'm eating lunch. I, I work right behind me. Oh, well, I got a phone call. You was in here eating lunch. I mean, all these crazy, what, what you stop me? I mean, all these traffic stops. What you stop me for? I don't know. I'm, <laughs> you know, where you going? All that crazy stuff. And here's the thing about all these convictions. I want to I clear this out now. You realize if you get arrested, not convicted, but you get arrested for a violent crime, any violent crime, rape, all this good stuff. And you get a public defender, you can't afford no bail, you work at minimum wage, you're only out as what? A plea deal. You may do some jail time, you may not. Do you realize, I think it's what, 36% of black men arrested have to, for violent, I don't mean traffic, I don't mean shoplifting, but for violent offenses have to take plea deals because they can't even afford a good lawyer, whether you know it or not. And I, and I have the, the data to prove it. OK, not the facts, but I got the data to prove it, that the majority of all the, of all the convictions are plea deals. So, like I said, some of the most racist comments she read was that, you know, it came from other black folks who hate her guts. But I mean, what, what do you expect when you when you at the funeral of this man and this dude's two little black girls got to see a video of a middle aged black woman calling their daddy a scumbag, the scum of the earth? And you think these little girls are going to look up to you in the future? And she doesn't sit there and spit on the spit on the uh, on the memory of two black men. She took she made it her business to go viral with that Ahmad Aubrey video, saying that he deserved it. He was stealing from a house. He was jogging with combat boots on. She did that to herself. Nobody made Candace Owens make that video. That man is dead. And mind you, had it not been for the video she was commenting on, they wouldn't have even got arrested in the first place. That's the, that's the worst part about it. So how's it her job to wake up the black community? You know what I'm saying now? When nobody even asked her to do that. Blexit was never ever a real movement. And it never ever will be. Not if she the mouthpiece. The problem with black conservatives is they have no problem throwing their own people under the bus and act like they're doing us a favor in the process. And the sad thing about it, bro, Candace Owens ain't even done. She got she got way more where that's coming from. Because mind you, these men ain't been convicted yet. If they even even if they even are convicted, and as far as us exalting our greatest and um, I mean I, I'm sorry, as far as us exalting all our criminals. There's Confederate statues all over this city. There's Confederate monuments all over the country. So what am I missing? There's a whole, like, what, mafia museum in Las Vegas. And I'm a big fan of criminals. I love, like, mafia stories. And from what I can understand, Roy DeMeo was chopping up human bodies all over New York. And there's several mafia movies out there. There's a whole uh, Dini O'Banion, who's an Irish guy. He uh, owned a flower shop in Chicago. There's a whole Al Capone-like tour out there. So what am I missing about them holding this guy up? It's Al Capone shirts. There's even, I even smoked a pack of Al Capone cigars. So y'all y'all need, need to really be careful about this weirdo, bro. I mean, she ain't for black people anyway. She says she is, but end of the day, that's why it's like literally second to no black folks following this, following this girl. And she want to wait till this man... Is in the is in a casket. The dude ain't even buried yet, and she couldn't even wait till the man was in the ground to spit on this man's name. I'm out.